What's going on here? Onishmas. Hey, he's a serious beastie boy. Hey, watch what moves first. Everybody tries to move this to throw. Now you're being so stiff that that's going to work. Okay, if you're that stiff, shit, I can throw you over there just through that. That's not even hard. Relax more. Okay, that relaxed extension that we talked about. So if I do this, instead of tightening up here and resisting, right. release it and come in with that hip and hit me. Okay, do Kota Gaish on me. That's what they're looking to do. Every time you try and take that wrist this way, if they're any good, they enter and hit you. Okay? See, this is why stiffness is no good. Because if you're stiff, everything works. I mean, anything I do hits your center. You see how that's working? But see, that really isn't right. Relax more. If you don't feel... Relax. If you don't feel something touching your center, if you feel it going this way, why would you tilt? Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Take your hip away. Relax your arm. <laughs> too stiff. Too stiff. Too easy. Okay? Relax. This has nothing... Yeah, exactly. What would you be doing? Exactly. You don't fall over for that. You hit me. So what I need to do is touch your center. Hold that hand up. Okay? So one of the things you can do with this is re <laughs> relax more so you're not hopping around out here while I touch your center. Have them hold the hand out. And what I want you to do is do the Kodagaish. Watch where that hand goes. If I move this, the hand comes towards me. If I do this, the hand goes away from me. See that whole hip and shoulder? I need to take that hip and get it going that way. You see? I mean, he reached out and touched my wrist as he fell, but his hip was caught. So if I do this, he hits me and enters in. But if I touch here and do this, he just falls, the whole body. Okay? So we were talking before about, thank you, Ikeda Sensei saying touch their spine. Okay? Wherever you're touching, touch their spine. I actually like to go a little more than that. If, if I'm touching his left arm, I like to go across and touch something on the right side. So there's your right hip or your right shoulder or your right foot. You feel me going all the way across here? Now, if I go in and I don't feel anything, I go in until I do. And if he keeps collapsing, I'll take his space away. This is not my problem. Okay? Try and throw me. He can't throw me because there's no connection to the center. I'm, I'm doing a... Okay? So the whole point of having the flow to the center is eventually, if he doesn't want me taking my, his space away, which means hitting him, he's going to have to give me some structure. So this is always touching the center. Okay? And then if I want to hit him, this is his defense. That's why he wants to stay connected. Okay? He wants to feel this. So I'll take this and touch something over on the other side, and then when I move, the whole body goes. Whereas if I just move this side, look over there. It still doesn't work. <laughs> Didn't work. No, you can't fool these guys. I mean, it's like he even did look over there, which was nice of him, but he felt me. Touch here, move here. He can't even bring the other hip into me. Okay? Does that make sense? Give him that same. Okay, so. Kodagesh. Now. Stay a little bit off the line so he's not already kicking and punching you. Now. Extend in. Can you touch that hip? Which means it's going to get heavy a little bit and go across him. Yeah, there's his hip. Now. Leave that. Don't change anything with that. Move this whole foot out and drop. There he goes. Sit down. You don't have any problem. You see what I mean? Half the time people are talking themselves out of it. You know, they say, going, oh, I don't understand. Then I call them up and they do it just fine. Okay? Okay? Don't talk yourself out of it. This is... This is there's a certain amount of this stuff that's energetic. Okay? This whole becoming part of their, their mapping system on an energetic level, that connection, 
and then knowing that they're going to stick with you when you move. Stay there. Don't push. Just static. Why the hell did he move over here? Okay. A lot of that, it has to be really, really clear. So this is why it's so hard to be a beginner. Because when you're a beginner, you, you don't know you can do it. I know I can do it. Therefore, it works. I hate to tell you, but some of, some of this stuff is, is that if you're going, I'm not sure what he did, you won't be able to do it. Okay? So, trust the instruction. Do it. But your practice is about taking something. I can get you to do it. You give me 20 minutes. You, you go to a seminar with Akeda Sensei, I don't care what he does. If you give me anybody in the room at any rank and you give me 20 minutes, I can get him to do it. It's not rocket science. It just needs good explanation. Okay? But that doesn't mean you go home and go, I'm a Kata Sensei now. Okay? It's what has to happen is lots and lots of repetitions so that that thing that you did in that controlled exercise becomes your default setting that your brain now knows that relaxing will help and make you safe. This is one of the things. Relaxing will make you safe. Not fighting with it, not competing with it, not escaping from it, but actually relaxing and accepting it. This is not natural to us. We have fight or flight. Neither one, fight or flight is not Aiki. Aiki is neither one of those. Aiki is be right there. And that's not natural. We have to train this. This is why in history, not all that many people were very good at Aiki. Okay, it's much easier to teach people to be aggressive. Okay? Go in, cut the center. You know, you look at, take a bunch of 18-year-olds and put them through Marine Corps training, and you can teach them how to fight. And they'll be good fighters. But teaching Aiki requires a lot more effort. And the guys who were good at this stuff historically typically started when they were kids and were taught by family members from the time they were kids. Or if they did start later in life, they did a lot of very, very, very intense training. You know? And a lot of them were in combat so that you know, the issue of being afraid wasn't much of the issue for them. Okay? But he's very strong. Grab my fingers. Finger lock me. Okay? So you all have seen finger locks. If I make this a neutral pivot point and he tries to finger lock me, take me down. Did you feel it? Okay? Five years ago, I couldn't do this. It's just an application of the same stuff we're doing. I'm making a neutral pivot point. We'll talk this weekend more about neutral pivot points. Some of what we did tonight was neutral pivot points. I just didn't tell you. Okay? But if you look, to finger lock me, he's going to run energy just like Yankyo. He's going to run energy off the top part of his arm that way. If I resist it, he gets on top of me and he takes me down. But see, if he runs it off the top part of the arm, I can feed it back to him underneath the arm. And the harder he does it, the more he floats himself. I can do that on a really big, strong guy. Thank you. Let's go to the other big, strong guy, just in case you didn't believe that one. Okay. So he starts to lock me down. He's trying to get this joint locked against the floor so I don't have any room. But if I go inside that as he does it, harder. I can get him to pop. It's kind of annoying for my fingers to hang in there that long. But you see, it's like almost everything you put out to me went back to you. So you put it out over there, and I fed it back up underneath. So the hard the more you popped, okay? I could try and teach you to do that. It would take me a little longer, not because it's any harder. It's just that you're not going to believe it. And if you don't believe it, you're going to tense up. And given the fact that your, pink, your fingers are getting torqued on, the moment you lose that sense of flow, it's on and your fingers are hurt. Okay, so this is one of the reasons why most of the training we do is a lot more user-friendly 
so that you can kind of hang in here and play with the connection. And nobody's getting hurt. You know, it can work or not work. If it doesn't work, there's no negative consequence. Nobody's getting injured. Whereas this is the same set of concepts, but if I screw that one up, my fingers can get sprained or broken. <laughs> it hurts when I do that one wrong. Okay, so you see? So it's not different. It's not even harder. But I know I can do it. Whereas if I told you guys to do it, your brain would not believe it. I, I consistently watch with the newer people. They start to get it. It's going. It's happening. They've got the other guy. And then they push your torque. Or push, because their brain doesn't believe it can be that easy. Okay? So your practice is to take this stuff and do thousands of repetitions to where you know you can do it. He can come up and grab my finger here. And I know I can do this. Five years ago, I would have tried that and I would have screwed it up. I could do some stuff, but I didn't, I didn't really believe that. You see all the movement I'm getting? He's got my finger. There's just nothing happening at the finger. I'm going in there and coming around behind him and moving him over there and coming over the top and dropping on his tailbone and come bringing him into here. What I'm not doing is moving the finger, but I'm connecting. You feel it go through you? Yes. Yeah. Hey, so everything we do this weekend is designed to give you more and more of a sense of this. Everybody did great tonight, I have to say. Okay? I don't think I've had a group this size with as wide a variance in experience and had everybody do it. There's always a few people who are kind of going, oh gosh, you know, and you just, you know. It's very, very nice, very relaxed, decent. Every, what was particularly good is how everybody followed instructions. I mean, I just went over and said, do this, do this, and you went, oh, okay, do. Sometimes you get people who are so their brain is so locked in on what they think they need to be doing that they can't even hear your instructions. You know, it's like, put your right foot forward. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> am I speaking Urdu? <laughs> you know, it, but you can get that. And then those guys are very difficult to uh, get through, right? So I hope, I, you know, I don't know how many, how many of you are here for the rest of the weekend or more of the weekend? Good, almost everybody. So. We will be able to play more with this stuff. What I want to do is take this connection work and then connect it to your Kihon Waza. This is one of the things where we're falling short a little bit. Akeda Sensei, you can do a whole weekend with him and do an entire array of really, really, really interesting connection work, and not a thing will look like anything you have to do on a Udancha test or a Q test. No one's teaching Kihon Waza anymore. A bunch of people have made some big jumps in their stuff, but who's teaching the Kihon Waza, which is what most of us have to be teaching our students. So what I want to do is take this connection stuff and say, okay, if I go in and bring it to me, but one of them can release low and one can release high, and there's your Tenshinage. Or they'll both go up and I'll move out here and then they'll both go down. And there's a sumi otoshi. We'll see if we can start to connect these same ideas. This one's actually the easiest one. It looks cool, but there's not much going. How do I give it direction now? This way, this way, this way, okay, this way. Boom. I mean, all these different directions. So we'll play with that and see if we can take this static stuff and get a little bit of flow into it, okay? We're done, guys. Tomo <sighs> arigato.